Hello and welcome back to art class. Uh, today we're going to wrap up our uh, background, middle ground, foreground picture. It happens to be in the drawing of a desert. Okay, today our focus is going to be on the coloring. And uh, the coloring is not going to be super difficult, but I am going to go over a few things. So I'm going to need you to watch the video and make sure you get things placed where they need to be. The first area that I want us to color is the background area. Uh, the reason why is it makes it easier for the foreground later uh, to be colored. So we're going to do the background first. And I'm going to give you some color choices in certain areas uh, just to make sure your picture has some options. Uh, but we are having a sunny day, so that kind of makes sense for the sun to be out. You're going to want to have crayons. Uh, you may want to have a pencil and eraser handy. That's just if you need to fix something. Okay, so I'm going to grab my yellow and the first thing I'm going to color is my sun. So I'm going to outline it first and fill it in. Okay. Next I'm going to want my sky. And since the sun is out, it makes sense that it is a uh, blue sky. So you can find any kind of blue. It will be pretty much okay. And there's quite a few. You can have a really light blue. You can have a regular blue. Even a bluish purple color would be probably okay. And we want to leave, if you have a cloud in your sky, you're going to want to leave that alone for right now. And since these are just lines, I'm going to allow us to color right over them and then we're going to trace over them in black after we've done the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and carefully outline around the areas that I want to be coloring. That way I know where to stop. Remember that the sky does go all the way to the ground. Okay, so my sky is done. Now I want to give you options with the, uh, oh, I got to do my birds before I forget. So let's do those. That's going to be a black because they're way off in the distance. So I'm going to be able to see them like that. Uh, brown is also a good color for that. So black or brown will work good. Uh, for the cloud, it could be white. You can just leave it white. Or if you want it to be more of a rain cloud, you could add a lightly with some gray. That would be an option as well. I'm going to leave it just fluffy white. The next thing in the background I want to color is the mountains. Now, uh, mountains are generally thought to be a brownish color, but if they're really, really far in the distance, they might have a purplish haze over them uh, just because of how far they away they are. But for most people, they will people want to be brown. So I'm gonna grab my brown. And I'm gonna to wanna to outline this part that I'm gonna color. The top is going to be snow. So I'm gonna leave that alone. And again, I'm gonna outline where I need to be. I want this to be a nice dark brown. So you're gonna need to make sure you kind of push hard or go over it a second time to make sure it's a nice dark brown color. Okay, so my 
background is now complete. Now I'm gonna work on the middle ground, this area right here. And the first thing I'm, is so actually I wanna stick with brown because we are in the desert. I do want to have kind of this sandy-ish color. So in the distance here, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna carefully outline the ground here, but I'm gonna do it lightly. I'm not gonna do it as hard as I did here. I want it to be lighter, softer, gentler. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to very lightly, very lightly color in so this kind of has a sandy feel to it. Because in the desert it's gonna be very dry. There's not a lot of rain so you don't get lots of flowering plants and things like that. Now if you happen to have any rocks in there, some people's pictures might have like a rock. Maybe you put a rock out here. We want to leave the rock blank for right now. So let's say I have a rock out here. I'll trace around it like I do everything else. I'm just gonna leave it blank. It's out in the desert, there are lots of rocks. Again, being very gentle soft to do this part. We do not want it to look the same as the mountains. Okay, next I want to do my rock. Now if I did brown that would be okay but I want to add a little other color to it and gray is a great color for rocks. So I'm going to go in there and outline it and fill it in. And I could put other rocks, so maybe I want a real rock over here, because there's lots of rocks. So I will know, since I have my gray out, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my rocks. Do you have to have rocks? No. Okay. Next, let's talk about this uh, cactus right here. We're gonna want the dark green that you have. It's, it's actually called regular green, uh, but it's the darkest green that you have, and that's the one we want. So we're gonna do this cactus as a regular green color. If you have a slightly darker green, that would be great too. Like that. Okay, now this is not done. They're cactus. The cactus have these needles on them that are very, very sharp. Uh, they protect it so animals don't want to eat the plant. So you're gonna use a black for this. And you're gonna put these little tiny marks. Some of them will actually kind of stick out of the cactus. But you're also gonna have some in the middle because you want these little marks everywhere so that it, the animals don't come by and try to eat the cactus. So it looks very sharp and very pointy. They're just little tiny marks. They're not dots, they're like little tiny marks. Okay, so we have the background done. Now we have the middle ground done. I would like to work on the foreground, the ground in the front, okay? Now we've done a light brown here, but that's a little problematic for here because if we do light, uh, another light brown, they'll look the same. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get an even lighter color that is close to that. We're gonna use this peach color. Or if you have a color that's called sandy tan, uh, that would be also another good color to use. And what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna outline the ground. Uh, you probably should have a snake here. You probably outline around that. Pretty close. All right, so that's my sandy tan or um, peach color. 
from the ground because it's up close. We need it to be a little bit lighter than that. And we have about two things left to do. We have the uh, big cactus here, and then we have the snake. So let's deal with the big cactus. Now, this cactus is a different kind of cactus. It's a different kind, so it's a darker color. We're gonna use a lighter green for this one. So we're gonna find your yellow green color, okay? Uh, some packs have this one here. This is a, a, a yellow green color as well, but it is a little close to the yellow. So I like the one that looks a bit more like grass. I'm going to just carefully boop, outline it first. That's what I should have done. Okay, so there's my cactus. Now, it's a cactus too. This cactus has those spikes on it as well. We are gonna change the color. In this one, we did black little spines and, and spikes. Uh, this one, because it's closer to us, we can see the color a little bit better. So we're gonna use the green, the darker green, so you can see the difference. This is the color that I did it in, and then this is the color that I need it to be. So we're gonna go in, and you're just gonna put in those little marks. Some of them will stick off, because remember, we were trying to get it so that the animals don't want to eat it. And they're little marks, they're not little dots, they're little tiny mark lines. So you're gonna have some on the inside, some right on the edge. There should not be any floating in the sky. That's not how cactuses work. Uh, they don't shoot their, their little spines and stuff into the sky. They just have them growing on the outside. Now, as I do with the marks, I actually do need to press kind of hard to get those marks to show up. So you may have to press hard with your crayon to get these little marks. So it's something you'll have to practice with, but there's lots of marks to practice with. Okay, looks very sharp and spiky. Okay. And our last thing that I have, I kept it last, is the little snake that you have here. This snake could be several colors. If it, um, you can use a brown color for the snake, um, but a lot of people think of snakes as green, and that will be okay. Um, snakes just generally aren't purple or blue. That's not usually pretty normal. Uh, so we wanna stick with the browns or greens for this one, just to kind of make it make sense. So I think I'm gonna go with the Rattlesnake. A rattlesnake is a brownish tan color, so I'm going to outline it. And if you want to give it the tongue an, a, a color, you can give it a reddish color that will work for the tongue. It's probably a bit small for eyes, but if you have room, you can add eyes to it. And there we go. We have our background done, we have our middle ground, and then we have the foreground, which is right in front. Our cactus and our snake and stuff is right up front. So it's just something to keep in mind when we talk about pictures, about background, middle ground, and foreground. All right, if you would, once you're done coloring and you've done a nice job, take a picture of it, upload it to is uh, activity and I will see you next week.